Oh, I should have brought my water filter to test here. Shoot. Yeah, I got to drink out of that at some point. Hey, morning guys, it's the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today, we're gonna to continue our series on radio direction finding, and I'm gonna focus on three things. Number one, we're gonna take a look at null hunting or using a minimum signal approach to triangulating a transmitter. In episode one, I used a directional antenna and it was doing something called peak hunting where I was looking for the strongest signals and that it had the effect of giving, giving me some fairly large arcs in terms of the signal. The literature suggests that null hunting gives you a steeper drop off where there is no signal so the bearings should be tighter. Uh, number two, we're going to be looking at some terrain analysis. I am a big fan of offline mapping and data so I'm using uh, radio mobile to take the 50 milliwatt transceiver we have, pin it where we're going to drop it and then do analysis on the RF coverage. It's suggesting that the RF coverage will be longer than I think it is, but we'll find that out too. And then number three, we're going to be using good old map and compass along with the UTM grid square to do all of the mapping things. And in my chest rig here, I have the third iteration of my land nav kit prototype. All right, stick around. We're going to go head over to the spot where the transmitter was dropped off in the first episode. I got to go find that first. And then we're going to go ahead and use the e-bike just for fun to zip around and cover some more miles. We're looking for the uh, Klein pool here. It's like a little cistern, and it might be back here, actually. We see barbed wire fence. It's a good sign. Yep, here we go. All right. Got to tell you that e-bike makes all the difference. Anyways, uh, this is the uh, spot where my neighbor hid the transmitter in episode one. Uh, this whole area was uh, developed by Jedediah Klein during the turn of the last century. And we've got a little cistern here. So I'm going to go over where the bike is on the other side. And uh, we're going to drop off the uh, Bionics uh, Microfox 50. And I did uh, program it last night and uh, set it to 50 milliwatts. So should be fun. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can triangulate it. I'm not going to go too deep in this episode on the map and compass work. I kind of covered that in the first one. But I am going to certainly capture the exact coordinates, plot it on the map, and then head out ooh, probably a mile in each cardinal direction if I can and see if we can get a better bearing and see how close we get to reality. So here's a good shot of the VHF loop antenna we're going to be using from Aero Antenna. And here's our little transmitter. We'll flip this guy on. And we'll turn on the radio to make sure we can even hear it. And then our coordinates are 404-766 Easting by 375-1873 northing got the good old grid square here yeah so i'm just comparing where i wanted to get to and uh, we're pretty close 404 766 okay so i'm going to make that correction here where we actually have the fox you know what we might as well also erase our spot right here too Four zero seven six seven eight seven three. All right, so this is where we're at right now. Uh, the plan is going to be to travel east, and I think we're going to go at least over one kilometer here. So let's go ahead and try to hit this point, maybe just a bit further, and then we'll take our first bearing. And the goal is to see how close we get to uh, getting a good uh, direct bearing using the null hunting techniques. Turn on the radio one more time. Okay, we're at three miles on the bike.
Well, folks, we've answered one of our questions. How well does the propagation tool line up against reality? Not very well, unless I screwed something up on that tool. Uh, I am using an open source tool, so I can't fault it that much. And again, there is a big difference between what works in theory and what works in the real world. And I only made it three tenths of a mile. And as you can see here, I do not have any type of uh, signal being received on my radio. So that was a good data point. I had a suspicion that the 50 milliwatts would not travel as far as the coverage data suggested. So we're gonna head back and just barely get to the point we're able to receive. And we're gonna try to establish that first bearing with the loop antenna. I'm gonna turn up the volume all the way here. And we're gonna head back. Oh. We are just on the cusp here of picking up a signal. Let's wait till it's a little steadier. Okay. So we're at just about the edge of the range with this vertical here. As I mentioned before, I'm using the RSI meter. And once this gets to about 120, that is about the limits of the receiver sensitivity of this rig. And we're at about 110. And uh, what I also want to prove for myself is will the loop antenna be able to pick the signal up because the vertical has quite a bit more gain. Took a little bit of a tumble. As soon as I heard that squawking. Take off the vertical. All right, cool, so the loop is picking it up. My understanding with the loop antenna is that the nulls are most pronounced when you're looking through the loop itself. So if this happened to be the area where the transmitter was transmitting, this would be the null. And I'm gonna try first to rotate the antenna while I keep the antenna or keep the radio in the same position. and I'm looking for higher negative numbers. All right, touching the antenna is affecting it. Let's go ahead and do this. Oh, 114 there, look at that. Right there. All right, guys, so I'm gonna get the, uh, the compass out and we're gonna go ahead and plot some coordinates. So I took a second bearing. This is one of the lessons that I learned in my first one was to do a range. And uh, we're right at 114 degrees. The first bearing was 88, so still pretty wide. So I'm pretty sure I might be doing something wrong with this fox scenting or my terrain is really problematic. I made sure that there was nothing that would set off the uh, magnetic needle here. But yeah, we're going to plot this down and uh, see if we come close, anywhere close to where we had left the transmitter. Four, nine, five, four. And then we've got our easting at... One nine four seven four oh four. Shit, we're in the same grid.
All right, folks, I hope this comes on camera here. So I've plotted myself on the map. Again, we are fairly close. If I were just to see how far we are point to point, we'll just use the grid square here. And let's see this, we'll put number, we'll put zero on that point. We're about 220 meters from where the fox was to my current position. So not very far, 220 meters is one eighth of a mile and this is the edge of our receive since the null that experience was uh, the first one was at 88 degrees that is this line right here and then the other one where i had the deep null that arc that i wanted to establish was at 114 so it seems to indicate that the signal is just a bit off uh, i was expecting the dot here to be here so Let's put this away for a second. So I'm gonna call this one a little bit early. I got enough data to realize that it would be futile to keep on moving. So number one, the null loop actually did work to uh, establish the nulls. The degree or the arc from where we saw the nulls was a little bit wider than I had wanted. So we had 88 degrees on one end and 114 degrees on the other. So 14 plus 12. Uh, what is that 26 degrees so quite a bit uh, quite large uh, pretty close to what i saw with the yagi when we were doing peak hunting uh, it was nice being able to go and uh, test out my land nav kit here and i'm going to make a couple tweaks based on just using it out here i still had to improvise a little uh, rock table there which was fun but uh, yeah the propagation uh, tool is the one that's getting me if you guys are experienced with vhf uhf uh, propagation analysis, terrain analysis using Splat or Radio Mobile, please let me know. I'll throw up the uh, metrics that I captured on the screen as well as the antennas I'm using. And uh, I'm really hoping that I screwed up and that, um, you know, it's not something that is uh, generally found when doing this type of analysis. Anyways, big thanks to the Buy Me a Coffee go guys. You guys are amazing. I couldn't do this without you. And uh, if you're new to the channel, Welcome, hit that thumbs up, th hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Uh, I'm the Tech Prepper, be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Well, at least we don't have any uh, battery issues.